Mr. Jones. Thank you. Uh, I did want to get some points uh, out that were spoken to. Um, as far as I know, no one has said that we don't need or desire a town planner. No one, including myself. I am not aware of anyone, including myself, <coughs> who said it wasn't in the purview of the planning board to hire a town planner. Mm -hmm. However, it is clearly also not in the purview of the planning board or anyone else to fund positions. It's entirely up to the legislative body, that is to say the voters of this town. They're the only ones that can fund positions. This budget committee is here by statute to assist the voters in making those decisions. And the pursuit of this topic by this budget committee, as far as I'm concerned, has been pursuant to that objective. Okay? Now, I know we've got uh, <coughs> a secret memo from the lawyer, or confidential memo, sorry, and I cannot speak to it. But it's been, you know, prettying up the issue, and uh, it's still not pretty enough. It speaks to, as many of you have, the RSA is to say state statutes. I think all of us learned in grammar school that uh, the Constitution trumps all state statutes as well as local town laws. The problem that I have, and have expressed in our previous meeting, is one of Constitution not of state statute. I am well aware of and have been studying the state statutes that are relevant, all of which is contained in the prettied up attorney's confidential memo. The problem remains. We can see that in the three years in question, the voters of the town, the legislative body, voted no three times. That, in my mind, is a clear expression of dissent to having a town, uh, town planner position clear dissent. There's no doubt about that. <coughs> Just a clear fact that stands on its own. Former Slep and Pluff, who was on the board in 98, suggested that it was $12,000 a year back then. I don't doubt that. I, I didn't look that aspect of it up. Uh, so I just, I know you're an honest man, so I just believe what you say to be true. And, you know, I look at the question of, well, no one seems to know why the Warren Articles were written if you already had the authority to do it. And that is a question that I pursued for some time, trying to figure out just why. And as I looked at the pattern of Warren Articles, as you know, I've been studying the entire history of Warren Articles for the past 20 years. And I see that as we progressed away from SB2 in 97, it became less and less things were being put into the Warren Articles and asking the voters. They were simply done. And since the town planner was hired, we've had many other positions that were created that Warren Articles were not created for because there was assumed power at that point. There were no longer watchdogs at our town meetings because our town meetings, by many's interpretation, was basically eviscerated yep. by SB2. So the watchdogs that were here in place for centuries at our town meetings just didn't show up. There were no watchdogs. No. So the town manager position and the board of selectmen started centralizing and assuming powers, and the watchdogs went around to bark. So that explains why just after SB2 was passed, these questions were still, you know, reflecting the attitude that the watchdogs were there. But after a few years, it was evident they watchdogs weren't there, so let's just do it. So I hope I answered that question sufficiently in terms of uh, it being the most probable explanation as to why the Warren Articles were placed there and why they're not subsequently being placed there now. Now, the constitutional question in hand that I referred to is actually in the Bill of Rights in the New Hampshire Constitution. It's Article 1. And it says that all government is of right originates from the people and is founded in consent. Founded in consent. But here we have a situation where we have officially expressed thrice dissent. When I put these two facts together, these two facts stand all on their own. Constitutional statement, government is founded in consent. Three times the expression of dissent. I put these two facts together and it's they don't go together. 
It's like putting polar opposites together. They just naturally repel. So, therein is my understanding of the situation. Uh, the, the RSAs are all being trumped. They're not relevant to this question. And uh, the attorney knows very well that I am raising this question, and so do not others, but we want to dance around and ignore the Constitution, it seems, just as much as we wish to ignore the voters, it seems. So that's my summary, and that's all I have to say. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Tim.